So it's the day after Computex, I've just got back and flew in, slept on the plane surprisingly. I usually never sleep on planes and this one had the whole row to myself and the seats folded up as well, so it made like a double bed. More importantly though, we've got to get back to the hustle, back to the grind, as over Computex, these companies, they were just squeezing my nuts. But you know what, in the end, it was the yes that ended up singing the high notes. But what we got here today is a suitcase PC, a Raid Max Troy. Got this on the monthly used parts hunt. I'll put the link up here if you haven't seen it already. And also picked up a lot of other parts as well. H61N motherboard, GTX 1066 gigabyte, free budget power supply I brought back from Computex. They were throwing it out. I was like, hey, it's got 300 watts on the 12 volt rail. Why not pick that up and put it in this build? Also got a 240 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM that we're gonna try and put in. But what are we waiting for? Let's try and piece this thing together, but it needs a two to tech yes level first. So we just tried cleaning all these parts down now with the data vac and that's like a blower that essentially just blows really sort of targeted air towards the parts and gets all the baseline dust. So this time around it's met its maker and that it's having a difficult time getting out some of the grime within the fins here, which is, has been admittedly sitting around for quite some time. This here, also another problem is it didn't come with a traditional screw set. So I found some sort of uh, screws that if I reverse mount it and then put in one of these uh, tops here, it will mount. Since I've only got two of them, then I'll have to mount it on the diagonal. And now since it's a 3770, it's not going to be overclocked. Should be absolutely fine. It should actually run a lot better even still with just the diagonal than a stock Intel cooler. So now this is probably the only time you're going to see me not use brake cleaner on uh, PC parts. And the reason being is though, although it's dirty, they've got the hoses here, which is close to the uh, actual uh, radiator. Now if brake cleaner gets on the hoses, it could indeed eat away at it. And if you've got that in a PC build, you do not want that uh, leaking whatsoever. Also the fins on the GPU, they're pretty thin and they are made of plastic. So using brake cleaner on that uh, could indeed make the fins weaker over time. It's probably only one of the few times you'll see me not using brake cleaner on something this dirty, but I think the build's pretty much ready to get installed now. So before we install this motherboard in the computer, of course, we've got to mount the cooler bracket on the back, but also update the BIOS. And we have done that now, and our i7-3770 now works. Also, this memory here, the uh, Corsair stuff, it wasn't compatible. This is an eight gig stick. It wasn't compatible with this motherboard. This one worked solo, but this didn't. So unfortunately, it's my only two eight gigabyte sticks I have. So I'm gonna have to go with two four gigabyte sticks for this build. So now here's the build, it is finally complete. It actually took a lot longer than I thought it would. This front uh, fan here giving us the main problem. I had to actually remove the drive bay in the end. So we've got our SSD just freely sitting in there, but everything fit in the end and I'd kind of rather have a water cooler in a case this small. And it's actually good that we've got a reference graphics card as well, because that'll be blowing air out. This will be blowing air out as well. So we've kind of got negative pressure in here which should hopefully keep temperatures down. But speaking of that, we've got low power consumption to begin with, non-overclockable CPU, GTX 1060, and it's time to finally boot this thing up. But really when it comes down to it, this case, the Troy, it's, it's a really cool concept. Like you can close it, quickly lock it up, and then just move and take it anywhere. It'd be 
absolutely awesome if you guys are traveling with the case constantly to your mate's house or whatever. But the problem is just the design itself. Like, it's a shame you couldn't fit a 120 mil rat in here. That would have been the perfect spot. You wouldn't have to change anything. And then just things are a little bit finicky. Getting the grabs card in was a bit of a pain. And of course, this here was a bit of a pain too. But after a bit of hacking and slashing, the final result is pretty cool. So hopefully it does perform as well. We're gonna put the thermal camera on this thing and see the thermal performance with these kind of parts inside. So what are we waiting for? So there it is guys, the suitcase PC is finished and it's sitting here behind me. It's actually whisper quiet too and the temperatures are okay. They're not that great. Uh, the CPU not overclocked, went up to around 85 degrees. Then we put the thermal imaging on it, seeing what's happening. The heat is escaping, uh, but lifting up the case and then letting the air out. Did see around a four degree drop in temperatures. So of course the case, just like putting all the build in, it isn't that well designed. Uh, but in the end, it does do the job. Once everything's finished, and you got the sort of cables zip tied up, it does do a good job. Like if you do port this around, it will do a good job gaming. And I tested it out in Far Cry 5, it ran absolutely fine, getting around 70 average FPS, no stuttering. Going to project cars, this was a very smooth experience. 0.1% low, 1080p high settings was like, I think 88.1% low. So very good in games. Moving over to uh, Witcher 3, however, that did exhibit some stuttering at 1080p. Witcher 3 just seems like it's a hard game to get right in terms of uh, having those dips to like 12, 13, 14 FPS. I even tried overclocking the memory. That didn't really make a difference. Uh, I was still stuttering after I overclocked the memory. Tried overclocking the CPU as well before it scored 670 uh, Cinebench on auto. And then after I tried uh, putting it up to 3.9 gigahertz, it did actually worse. Uh, so the motherboard itself was hitting about 80 degrees on the VRMs. Not really too keen to push this motherboard a whole lot since it is a H61. Uh, so it's not the best, pretty much the bottom of the barrel when it comes to motherboards. But in the end, everything worked out. I think the CPU just leaving that at stock does a good job, especially since those temperatures are already getting pretty high into the mid 80s with the Corsair all-in-one. The way I mounted it, it did work in the end, does okay. Everything's pretty good. Noise is actually really low. And the best thing is it plays games really well so this little pc here if i had to do one thing i'd probably like to add 16 gigabytes of ram instead of 8 gigabytes but it all worked out suitcase pc let me know what you guys think in the comments section below and lastly if you wanted to do a build like this it would set you back a little over 600 us uh, the case however i can't find it anywhere in stock there's no ebay sellers selling it no gumtree sellers it's called the raid max troy i think another company did do a similar model to it uh, but I'm not too sure, uh, maybe like Fang or something like that. But I'd imagine you'd pay around $50 for this case max. So that'd bring this whole total uh, at market rates to around about $650. Keep in mind, I paid uh, a lot less for all these parts. Uh, in terms of what I spent on this build, would be closer to around $300. Uh, so this build is just, of course, for the money. And when you hustle, you get really good deals, as you guys already know. So it's all about picking up them deals, hunting the market, getting the best deals possible. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you on another one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.